First in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate. All custom tailored for you. Call 212 Choices, 212 Choices for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212 Choices, 212 Choices. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non-invasively. He was the first in New York with fractionated brain radio surgery, and he's the first in America and in the Western Hemisphere with body radio surgery. Hey, Dr. Lederman, we're back. Hey, we're back. We're back. I want to talk about a gentleman just for a minute who came in with hepatitis C, night sweats. And night sweats means that you're sweating so much at night that you have to change your pajamas or change your sheets because they're just soaked. And some red urine, meaning some blood in the urine. So for this man, we're getting him staged up. We're checking on his hepatitis C. We know hepatitis can lead to liver cancer. So we're checking him for liver cancer. We're checking his urinary system because we know if you have blood in the urine, red blood, blood in the urine, you could have a tumor or cancer. Of course, you could have a kidney stone, and we're going to check on that too. And we do that by getting a scan of his kidneys, the tubes from the kidneys to the bladder, the ureters, the bladder. The bladder needs to be looked inside, which we're arranging, and the urethra, which is the tube from the bladder, out to the outside world. So that tube is a little bit different in men and women. We know men, it goes through the penis. Women, it does not. So he's getting staged up. We're checking on his liver for hepatitis C. We're checking on his kidneys, the ureters, the bladders, the urethra. And we'll give him a report back. He'll get the report in his hand with the disc, with his pictures, and he'll know what's going on, exactly what's going on. And speaking about screening, well, that was not screening. That was working up symptoms that he had. So screening is looking at people to try to find diseases before they cause harm to them. So what's the most screened part of the body? Well, it could be the breast, women who get mammograms. It could be cervix, women who get pap smears. It could be men who get PSAs and physical exams. Or let's talk right now about colon cancer. I have a couple dear, dear friends with colon cancer. Boy, do I wish they had colonoscopy years before. Now, the incidence of colon cancer has been declining since the mid-1980s, and it plunged a further 30% in the last decade. This is an article that was written by Melinda Beck in U.S. News. It plunged a further 30% in the last decade among Americans 50 and older as more people had colonoscopies. The drop in colon cancer death rates accelerated as well. Following, this is death rates from colon cancer, fell 3% per year from 2001 to 2010. And in the decade before, it fell 2% a year. So it's been going down, 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 which is great. This is one down, not like the Wall Street stock market. This is a drop in colon cancer death rates going down, down, down. The American Cancer Society chief said that without widespread screening efforts, this would not be happening and that we'd be seeing twice as many colon cancer deaths today. So, wow, colon cancer has been affected in a good way with a reduction in death rates by screening. Now, we've talked about Afro-Americans having higher death rates from breast cancer and from prostate cancer, and the reason it's believed is just delay. So if you have a cancer, give us a call. Come in. We promise we'll see you within 24 hours, the next business day. Give us a call. But in Afro-Americans, Afro-Americans, there's a 25% higher rate of colon cancer than in whites and a 50% higher risk than in Asian Americans. That's thought secondary to socioeconomic factors and genetics. 
Colon cancer has strong hereditary uh, implications. People with a close family member or several distant relatives are at much higher risk than others in the population. Experts recommend that people in this category begin screening when they're 10 years younger than the youngest relative was at the time of diagnosis. So if you have a cousin who was diagnosed at 35, you should probably get screened at 25 because you want to be ahead of that curve. Ahead of the curve means early screening. Now there's recommended at age 50, people undergo one of the three forms of colon cancer screening. One is colonoscopy once every 10 years. Another is a test for blood in your stool, in the feces, in the poop, as we say. Or sigmoidoscopy, which is a test of the lower gastrointestinal tract every five years, along with a stool test every three to five years. So there are things to do, and probably all of you, you too, you, 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 need to get screened. Now, if you've had colonoscopy... Are these other tests good? If you haven't, it's time to get hooked up. So if you have a gastroenterologist, see that person. If you don't, call us up. We'll hook you up with a good gastroenterologist, and you can get screened. There's also something called virtual colonoscopy, which is a CT scan instead of that fiber optic camera, and that's non-invasive and has no anesthesia. And it's even more sensitive than colonoscopy. But if you have a polyp, then you still need to get that polyp removed so it doesn't solve all the problems, but it's a great start. So there are options available for you, but every American needs to have their colon checked and continue this plunge in colon cancer death rates. That's what we're here for, to decrease cancers, improve your health, Get you better care for a better life, for a longer life, for a healthier life. So that's why we're here. My name is Dr. Gil Lederman from Radio Surgery New York. We're at the private cancer center called Radio Surgery New York at 38th and Broadway, 1384 Broadway. We take most all insurances, Medicare, Medicaid, which is questions people commonly ask. We have a spacious, modern cancer center in Manhattan. It's private means our boss is you, not a drug company or a pharmacy or something like that. It's you. We work for you. You're the boss. You're the president of the United States of your body. It's a center where everyone knows who you are. There's not miles and miles of cold corridors and locked doors and strange faces. No, we know who you are. We take the insurances. We take most all insurances, Medicare, Medicaid. We have a policy to see people if they need within one business day called the Urgent Cancer Consultants. So even if you need We've been waiting months, years. We had some people this week waiting two years elsewhere. Came in to see us and saw the doctor, got a full physical, full history, and got direction, not confusion. So give yourself the most chances. Give yourself the most choices by calling 212-CHOICES. Someone said I should give you that number. So that number is 212-246-4237. 212-246-4237. So we're not only super convenient, but I think we're pretty super. The way we're available to you, that we review your records, give you copies, talk about all options, and then you decide. As I say, you're the president of the United States of your body. I have another man that I want to talk about today who had stage 4 lung cancer. He was not well known to his chemo doctor. He'd had two different kinds of chemo over the last six months, and he was ready to die. This guy couldn't stand up. He was a proud man, married, and he came to me. He couldn't stand up. He was so weak, and he had sores all over his body. He had sores around the anus. He was in so much pain and so much suffering. He had sores around the scrotal area, all from the chemotherapy. So I saw him and started treatment when chemotherapy didn't work. He had chemotherapy, and the cancer kept progressing. He had a massive mass in the chest, 
We treated that with non-invasive focused beam radiosurgery. People ask, what is it? I mean, it's a method that allows us to treat the cancer most anywhere in the body and most any kind of cancer, even if it's so-called radioresistant like melanoma, sarcoma, kidney cancer, and have high success rates. So we stopped the chemo, which wasn't working. He had multiple cycles of chemo, wasn't working. We gave him focused beam treatment to treat the large mass in the lung. He is now back to normal. He's strong. The sores from the chemo have gone away. The pain has gone away from chemo. And I believe the cancer is shrinking. Symptoms are improved. We usually do scans every three months to prove that he's in remission. We can even treat other sites if he wants. So this gentleman was always active, always strong, always a great husband and father, can now resume his functions and not be suffering day and night from that chemotherapy. So it is good news for him, and it's the kind of work that we do. So no, we don't bait and switch. We offer people the options, and people can decide themselves. We think that people, patients, are smart, and they can decide. They don't want someone to hit them on the head. They can decide when given all the options. There was a new article this week that looked at breast cancer mastectomy survivors opting for reconstruction. Now, according to the American Cancer Society, in an article by Mary Bowerman in the USA Today, there's 235,000 women who are diagnosed with breast cancer, and 40,000 will die of this disease. So, wow, lots, tens of thousands, 40,000 will die. Now, she writes that for survivors who undergo mastectomy, life after cancer can be especially hard mentally and physical as they deal with their new body image. And I often talk about that to women. Sometimes women think if they just remove the breast, they'll be home free. Well, that's not true. Just because you remove the breast doesn't mean the cancer is going to go away. In fact, there are studies that show that if you save your breast, usually removing the lump of cancer, saving your breast, and having a short course of radiation, you actually have the same chance of being alive cancer-free as someone who removes the breast. So why remove the breast? If the success rate's the same, having the breast that God gave you, that your parents gave you, that you have, why would you want to remove the breast and then do reconstruction? Now, true, some women cannot keep their breast. Sometimes the cancer is too massive. But I can tell you that a lot of that is based upon the physician, and a different physician may feel differently about it. And that's why I tell women with breast cancer, and in fact every patient, that you have chances, you have choices. And you should learn about your choices before you make a decision. So don't get pushed into doing something that you don't really want to do. Or don't continue something if it's not really well tolerated. There are options out there. So there was a federal law in 1998 that said that most group insurance plans that cover mastectomies have to cover breast reconstruction. And so most women who've had mastectomies can get it covered by insurance. Of course, we make the point that for most women, not every woman, but for most women, you can keep the breast God gave you. And why would you want to keep the breast? Well, number one, it's yours. Number two, a reconstructed breast will most likely never look as good as the breast you have. Also, the breast you have has the nipple areolar complex, so you'll have the sensation of the nipple areolar complex, where in the breast that's reconstructed, usually the nipple is just a reconstructed look-alike, but not sense-alike, so it won't feel like the typical nipple, and you will lose those sensations so there's lots of reasons, really, to keep the breast. This study was looking at women who are increasingly want to get part of their life back together. But again, we warn you that let's speak first before you have radical surgery or modified radical surgery removing your breast because there's a great chance we can keep your breast and avoid that surgery and then avoid the multiple surgeries to try to reconstruct the look of a breast, which is not really a breast or have the sensations of a breast. So... On that note, 
We're taking your calls. You can call us at ABC. We're